Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. Today is December 12th, I'm picking up where I left off in the last episode. And at the end of the last episode, what we had going on is we had a failing test. I'm getting ready to implement the persistence call in application frames so that when we run our, uh, when we run our Save As dialog and click the Save button, I want that to actually call in to the application model and tell it to save its state, which um, I think is going to be a pretty decent design. And in doing that, I realized that the way I'm going to want to test that is by mocking out the application model and verifying that the save method was called. And as an aside, I've done a little bit of looking around, and it turns out that some people call that a test spy, not a mock. Other people call it a mock. Some people call it a mock, but no, it's a spy. I'm going to call it a mock. Um, okay, and, and sidebar, if that didn't make any sense, don't worry about it. I don't think it really matters. So, and I'm sure that will get me flame mail if the people who do think it matters ever hear this. Anyway, so because I want to use a mock object, I want to mock out the application model class or create a spy for the application model class. Um, I was looking around at how I had done this before and I discovered that configuration panel does something very similar. It, it creates a mock application model, a test spy, um, and use that instead. And I thought, well, if we're going to do this again, either I need to factor this class out, or maybe I should use a proper mocking framework. And so I went and downloaded Mokito, which is a mocking framework I've been very happy with in the past, and ran the test, and it's not working. So, short story long, uh, this isn't working. So I've got this set up where I'm mocking the application model, creating the panel, setting the text, and it's failing with a null pointer exception. The reason it's failing with a null pointer exception is because we're trying to get the starting balance out of the application model, and Mokito doesn't know, doesn't know what the starting balance method is, so it's returning null. Null is not appropriate in this case. If we return null there, then when we instantiate that dollar's text field and we call to string on the initial value, we fail. So that's good. That's failing fast. That's the way we want it to. That does mean, however, that we need to build this up a little bit more. We need to say that when the mock model um, is called, specifically when the get let's see, how does this work? Do When the mock model's uh, starting balance method is called, then we want to return um, well, let's just return a valid dollars dot min value. Actually, let's return a new an invalid dollars. Can we do that? No, I don't think so. Yeah. Just so that it's clearly doing the wrong thing there. So that should now pass except it doesn't. <laughs> it was supposed to, but it didn't. We are asking for starting balance. Let's stop being so darn fancy and just create something. Still not working. So now we're getting into the problem of these mock object frameworks. If I want to debug this, um, well, honestly, I have no idea how to debug it. Let's just double check the documentation. When starting balance is called, oh, no, it's, it's not starting balance, it's cost basis. 
I see we've moved on to the next one. So are we going to have to do all of these? And now is it going to say the next one, which is, I don't even know what, yearly spending? Mm-hmm. Yearly spending, yeah. You know, the reason I downloaded Mokito is because I thought it would make this easier, but right now it's not looking easier at all. It's looking harder. Is that code actually any cleaner than this code here? And there's the whole method. Is that actually better? Part of me wants to say no, it's not really better, it's worse, it's tons worse. The reason this works is because we're extending a real application model and we're just stubbing out the methods we care about and then spying on them. That's why this is really called a spy, not a mock. We're saying, what was it called with? Um, which is fine. Um, the nice thing about having a hand-rolled one here, well, first off, I'm not doing this a whole lot. So it's not like I have to create a ton of these. I'm really avoiding doing any mocks or spies or test doubles uh, to the most extent that I can. So maintaining this is not a big deal. Of course, I can factor out this when, yada, yada, yada stuff, but then when I go into application frame test, I have to do it again, which means that I'd want to have a class that has it factored out, and ta-da, that's what we have. We have a class here that factors out that kind of concern. So, yeah. Yeah. I think I'm going to ditch Mokito. I think this actually seems to work a little bit better just the way it is. So I'm going to pull this all back out. And maybe there's something about Mokito that I'm missing. I haven't really delved it into it in depth. I've used it before. It's been a couple of years. Um, so, but I don't think there's any way to make it work the way I want it to. So just take all this back out. Get our code back to the way it was, which I think is there. And that should pass. Yeah. OK, so scratch the mock framework. Scratch Mokito. Uh, and I don't think any other mocking framework would work better. I think Mokito is a fantastic framework for mocking. I highly recommend it if that's what you want to do. Um, I've just decided that that's not what I want to do. Instead, what I want to do is I want to pull this out. I'm going to call it application model spy because that's what it is. Yes, I'm, I'm succumbing to the temptation to overname things. But um, yes, we'll call it a spy because after doing a little research, that seems to be the correct name for it. Then we'll make this public. Make sure all this still passes. and then pull it out into its own file. How do we do that? I think we move it to a new file. Yeah, I think that's right. Cool.
And this weird double underscore naming convention I'm using, I, I will admit, it's quite strange. Uh, the reason I do that is I like to keep my test code in the same folder as my production code. The reason I like to do that is just I like to have everything all together, and using the underscores causes things to sort the way I want. It's really just that simple. Um, there is the potential that by using a double underscore, I'm possibly going to interfere with some reserved words because compilers often use double underscore for their own reserved stuff. I think in Java they tend to use dollar signs though, so I'm going to call this good. Uh, if it does cause problems, I'll come up with a different naming scheme. But if you don't like the naming scheme, that's just fine. Use your own. Um, but I'm going to use mine. So now that we've got application model spy, I think we can come back into here and say um, that if we do something that makes the file dialog have a makes the pushes the save button sort of then we want to be able to say assert true application or mock mock model dot save called just like that we should say and actually what we want it to be saved called with our example path name. So just like we're doing in here, we should say application model should be told to save. And then we're going to expect some path name example, path name, and then we'll see that it was save called with was set. This has been a weird couple of episodes. Um, I don't know if I'm explaining things clearly at all. It's kind of late in the day here and I'm a bit tired. Um, I hope this all makes sense. And if not, if it doesn't make sense, hopefully it'll become clear over the next couple of episodes. What I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to figure out the design for this and I'm, I'm playing with the code as I go and I'm pushing and I'm pulling and I'm just trying to make it all sort of fit together. This, uh, this happens when I'm exploring new parts of the design. So I apologize. It should become more clear soon. The, the meat of it is, is that we're going to create this mock model. We're going to do something that causes the save method to be called, and then we're going to assert that that save is actually called. Yeah, that's going to happen. So here in application model, we're going to add a save method. What's that save method going to do? It's going to persistify, and uh, we'll work out exactly how that works later. But, um, yeah, so I know things are still a little confusing. Um, the big question is how do we get it to push that save button? I don't know yet. I think that might come in, uh, since we don't have the ability to actually push the save button, and I don't want to, that may be where we have to abstract out the file dialog. I don't know, uh, still kind of up in the air, but um, I think that's all the time we have for this episode. Lots of fumbling around here, so appreciate you sticking with me, and uh, I will catch you next time.